Hey everyone, in this video we're going to cover how to pair and use the Fluval AquaSky Bluetooth LED with the all new Fluval Smart App for your mobile device. First things first, before we get into that, you're going to want to make sure that you've connected the physical light unit correctly to your power supply. You can check the diagram on screen to help with that. And with that in check, then you're going to want to download the Fluval Smart App. Either the Google Play Store or App Store, you can find that. Um, in my case, I have an Android, so I'm going to go to the Google Play Store. I'm going to search Fluval Smart, all one word, open up the app page, and then go ahead and install that. And depending on your internet connection, this could take a few seconds or a few minutes, so we'll let that do its thing. Now my app is downloaded, I'm going to go ahead and open it. Now, one important note, uh, like any other app or technology, we're, we're making upgrades all the time to improve uh, the user experience for you guys. So it may look a little bit different, but essentially when you're at the app, you're going to want to go into your settings. Uh, like I have now in the bottom corner, you'll select your language. Uh, in my case, English. It's all, it auto defaults to English, but you'll choose your language and then you're good to go. Uh, one important note on the bottom, you can see the web uh, button that has some quick links to certain uh, Fluval tools that you may find helpful. In this case, our YouTube uh, channel with much uh, helpful videos. We'll have other promotions and other direct messages through here in the future, so you can check that out every once in a while. And in the bottom left, I've hit devices to bring me back to these, this opening page. First thing I want to do is pair my device, so I'll, I'll um, press on the plus symbol in the top right corner. It's now going to scan the area for any Fluval Bluetooth devices. In this case, I have two AquaSkies uh, next to me. So it's now searching for those and it brings those up. Now you'll see a lot of uh, letters and numbers. That's basically the uh, ID code for the Bluetooth chip. We can rename that and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. So I'm going to go ahead and select one. It's a two check system. I'm, I'll pick the first one. So I'll, I'll press on the checkbox. You see the green check mark and then I'm going to press the red check mark below to confirm that selection. It now shows me that that is, it's now confirming that that the, is the light that is indeed connected. I'm going to go ahead and press on that. It's now going to bring me to a manual or auto uh, selection mode for entering my light settings. Um, it's highlighted in white for manual. This is the manual screen, which looks like the uh, a traditional remote. Uh, in the top area, you can see you can pick your colors. You can toggle through those. You next below that have your uh, plus and minus buttons, which allow you to decrease and increase uh, light intensity as you go. Below that, you have P1 to P4, which allows you to uh, program uh, up to four different light settings. Uh, so you can save those. And below that, again, you have certain um, special effects. You can do gradual uh, color cycle, moon, lightning, et cetera, et cetera. So you can go through those. Now, uh, if I don't want to go manual mode, I'll then select auto up top. Now, auto allows me to uh, enter my sunrise, midday or daylight um, parameters, sunset and night, as well as some special effects with a little more detail. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and walk you through those. So if I click on sunlight first, I'll go ahead and enter when I want my start and stop times for that. And I'll click save. Midday or daylight, uh, again, this uh, will control my red, green, blue, and white channels. And I can select that with a simplicity of a slide and click Save. And notice as I'm moving these uh, color channels, you can see in the bar graph um, that's shaded, uh, unshaded right now, you can still hopefully see um, the color channels moving up and down depending on how I'm sliding that. So that just confirms kind of your intensity. Uh, selection. You'll go ahead and click Save. Sunset, just like Sunrise, I'll choose my start and end times for that. Let's say I want to uh, let that go a little bit longer and click Save. And finally, my night settings, uh, just like uh, my daylight or midday settings, I can move those out and about like I want. I probably want those lower with maybe a little bit of blue to replicate moonlight. And I'll click Save. Now if I want to kind of um, put some added special effects. In the bottom right corner, you see dynamic effects disabled. So I'll, I'll click on that area, and this will allow me to enable those if I so choose. So first step, uh, at the top, you're going to want to choose your uh, time. So press on, press on that, and you'll be able to move the uh, red ball around to 
or however you want to choose what time you want that to get uh, going. Below that, step two, you'll choose what days of the week you might want. So you, just by pressing on the days of the week here, in this case, Monday and Wednesday. Um, and in step three, I can add uh, whether I want what whichever special effect I want. So let's say I want some storm lightning. I'll choose that. Very important, guys, in the bottom left corner, you'll want to enable that. And then you can click save. So that special effect is now enabled. In the bottom left corner, I can preview now my settings. So if I go ahead and uh, click the preview button, you'll now notice in the graph area a red vertical line. And that basically uh, takes about 30 to 60 seconds to run through. And that shows me my 24 hour light cycle in that time frame. So it'll give me kind of a preview uh, of, of what's gonna happen in 24 hours. So here you can kind of see it in sped up mode. The light getting bright and then it'll decrease once I get to my sunset. So I'll just pause that. Uh, no need to go through the rest of that. In the, in the remaining buttons in the bottom left corner, I can save my profile. If I uh, wanna save this, let's say I enter, uh, maybe I'll wanna call it light one, I guess, and click save. Now in the extreme bottom left corner, you have the export button. This is where you can see in the, uh, the, the third selection is my light one. So that's my saved, these are saved profiles. So I can choose light one down the road. I can remove it or export it, which basically means to bring it up. Or I have uh, presets which are built in to the light. Uh, in the case of AquaSky, we have a color boost or plant boost. Uh, just makes things a lot easier for those that want to press things with one button and kind of uh, help them set out in either one of those cases, which are pretty self-explanatory. Um, in the top right corner, we have a pencil icon and a magnifying glass icon. If I choose the pencil icon, I can rename my device. Now, if you remember at the beginning, we had this is the ID code for the Bluetooth chip. I can go ahead and rename this light to, let's say I want to call it I'll call it Aqua One. I'll click Save. And um, this is particularly important if you have maybe several lights. It makes it easier to manage and remember which one's which. So in the top right corner, I have the magnifying glass icon. If I go ahead and click that, um, it'll actually blink whichever light I've paired. So this is particularly important for those that have maybe two or more lights. Uh, you're not sure which one you're entering light settings for anymore, just hit that magnifying glass and it'll reconfirm which physical light you're entering those settings for. So that sums up Fluval Smart Guys in a nutshell. If you have any questions or comments, we'd love to hear from you. Please enter them in the thread below.